Here we are with our highly anticipated walkthrough, but I need to pause and say something first. Due to the developer's choices to create an environment that is always fresh and new to explore without overburdening the game, I would have loved to record and bring you this walkthrough of Once Human in its entirety. However, even if I could have brought you a video every day for the next four weeks of the server's activity and the scenario, I wouldn't have been able to fully showcase both the new features the game already offers, given its vastness, and the future updates, since the series would have fallen too far behind what the game currently has available. So, I apologize to all of you for not being able to present the full gameplay anymore, but only specific moments of the game and missions, or moments when I find particular items that might interest you. Therefore, this will be the last nearly full video I'll share. For all the others, I will continue to show you the locations where I am, what I find, and important parts of the various character dialogues and missions. I hope you like the idea anyway, and that the video excites you as much as I enjoy playing this game. Now let's take some time to allocate the last accumulated points to complete the V cooking missions and improve our build since I dropped and created a few things in the last gameplay sessions. I've also adjusted and removed some items from the inventory. Let's get started on completing the final missions in the first area. First of all, if you remember, we needed to go meet and recruit Digby Boy, but we didn't have enough materials to get him before. Now that we've crafted and gathered what we need, we can finally go to him and offer our gifts. Let's go visit our friend Lo and see what he has to say about the little guy. Of course, the bike has to break down in the meantime, but at least we've got fuel. I've taken care of that ore-eating metal doll. Fabulous work, I have to say. Let me take a look. Ah, yes. Do you realize how special this little guy is? Does it split out gold coins? That would be nice, but no. It can help you mine, though. As long as it's fed, it will be your best friend. Our partnership is off to a great start, wouldn't you say? Take the deviation for yourself and remember to keep it in your territory. You're just going to give this thing to me. Why not? You see, I have no one but myself to look after. But you, you have a territory and containment facilities to worry about. Call it a gesture of goodwill. And I am more than happy to leave the deviation with you. My interest lies in the deviations themselves, not in the value they can provide me. Knowledge is all I crave. Lo was as kind as always. Now let's hear what Claire has to say about the missions I had. First of all, let's give her the magazine. Is this what you were looking for? Great, now that we've completed that task, let's head towards Lost Lady and Divine Property. We'll also pass through that town to activate the Rift Anchors. After arriving in town from where we were on our left, we find this beautiful supermarket. By taking down a few monsters, we can already find this loot chest. This will complete the first checkpoint of the Overlook Town exploration. As a reward, you'll receive 10 Blast Suits. In the supermarket, you'll find a door with a staircase leading down. Once you open the reinforced door, you can obtain some star lights, which are always useful, as well as other materials to destroy. And this is the loot chest I was talking about.
Exiting the supermarket, directly in front of you, you'll find the rift anchors by simply climbing these two buses. Continuing towards the stage with the big screen, you'll find a mini boss, though it's not really that many when you open the ammo chest, but it's always fun to take them in. One thing to keep in mind about these monsters is that they are extremely vulnerable to fire and lose a lot of health over time. So don't waste too much time, like I did at the beginning, trying to deal normal damage. Instead, start with a weapon modification or simply use your Olympic torch to inflict serious damage and take down that pesky monster as quickly as possible. As you just saw, this nasty foe dealt me a lot of damage at first, because I couldn't jump in time when he released his wave with his gigantic foot. But don't be afraid, just circle around him, look for the right timing, and he'll go down quickly, as you saw. I'm a bit disappointed because he didn't drop the important loot I was expecting, but at least we got the chest. Despite this letdown, I really enjoyed revisiting the charm of GTA San Andreas in this game. We're actually in CJ's house. What a great Easter egg. Meanwhile, in CJ's cousin's house, that shady character, we find the old move, which is a page from the field guide. While I was heading to the Divine Property Task, I encountered this amazing bus with arms and legs for the second time and decided to take it on. I must say that arrows and regular shots don't have much effect on it. However, if you throw Molotov cocktails at it, after seven or eight, it will stop and fall, allowing you to enter and grab the loot inside. But don't stay too long, or you might become an uninvited guest on its journey through the game world. As you can see, it goes down really easily. However, defeating it more than once won't yield additional loot, so take it down quickly, loot it if you're interested, eliminate any newly spawned monsters from its rampage, and then say goodbye, letting it continue on its path. Here we are at the Divine Property Mission. Hello. Glad to see some company. It's not safe to travel alone in the wilderness. A miracle sounds fishy. You are a drive out the darkness and the evil forever. And that quest is complete. I have to say the loot was quite nice too. For the final mission of today, we have Lost Lady. At this rate, I'll be talking to more ghosts than living people in this game. The Lost Lady. A shadow with consciousness?
All right, let's see where this charming lady wants to take me. Easy, it's also close by. Burn down the infected grapevines. It's a bit sad to burn these vineyards, but if they're infected, it's better to remove this year's grapes from the wine. Otherwise, imagine the stomach ache. The mission isn't progressing in that area. Instead, we need to head towards these facilities and find the entrance to the cellar. In the first shed you come across after the vineyard, you can find several pages from the field book. One is located at the entrance, as you just saw. Once inside, you'll find another one right away by climbing the stairs and then jumping down. There's also one among the benches. Apologies for the mix-up earlier. What I referred to as a shed is actually a house. At the exit of this house, you'll find another shed on your left. At the entrance of this shed, there's another page from the field guide. As soon as you arrive at the entrance, take the huge yellow object on your right. It contains a lot of crafting materials. And you'll also find another page from the field book. When you reach this crossroads, don't head towards the corridor. It's just another entrance and you'll waste time as I did. Instead, go directly towards the mission. Instead, head straight down. After defeating the few monsters present, you'll find two pretty good chests, especially for the blast suits with 10 pieces. Then, you'll need to wait until the end of the speech at the indicated point until everyone leaves. Once they do, you can continue with your mission. If you exit from the side I advised against earlier, you'll immediately find another page from the field guide right after. You can't miss it since you have the rift anchors nearby, so you can spot it right away. A little further ahead, you'll find an open shed with the monsters in a prayer phase. You can defeat them here and locate the seventh of the nine pages in this area. On the upper floor, you'll find the eighth page. Two rooms later, you'll discover the final chest for the exploration mission, which also contains a page from the shield guide, though from a different section. Following the mission to this structure, we can investigate the lower floor and find some clues. On the first floor, we can obtain the first objective by examining old clothing. On the upper floor, in a room with a library, we should investigate old books. Once we have these, we can head back to the friendly, ghostly old lady to complete the mission. Here's the first clue. Now let's exit and circle around the building, then climb the stairs to find, of course, a monster that will try to obstruct our path. And here we find the second clue. from the position of that house. If you turn towards the farm across the way, you can't miss it thanks to the wheels on the ground. You'll find a mini game there. As usual, just go inside, find the next one, and voila, you're done. And here too, we get an excellent reward.
But now let's talk to the friendly old lady. For now, that's the end of this episode. See you next time in this amazing game and walkthrough. As always, thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment, and if you haven't already, activate the notification bell for updates on my videos.